Okay, drugs. Well, you uh, have heard a lot about them by uh, by this age. So, um, you know that it's very important. It's uh, major crimes happen with drugs, either because uh, they own it, they sell it, uh, they take it, um, or the drugs cause them to do other crimes, uh, to steal in order to maintain a drug habit, or... Or uh, when people are on drugs, they don't know what they're doing, and they're doing crimes. It's a little bit of a digression just to talk about drugs and what they do and what they are and where they come from. But because it's so involved in crime, we are going to be dealing with drugs. And in a forensic uh, study, drugs appears so, so often in so many various ways. We should know a lot about drugs when we analyze, you know, you know, cases and we get evidence, we should know how drugs fit in there. So we should know a lot more about drugs. So we won't be doing that much regarding forensics in this lecture, but we should know about drugs because they will help us understand other forensic aspects of crime and other drugs that accompany it. So, yeah, we know what the drug problem is. People take drugs and ruins their lives. Uh, I'm not going to... Um, say much about that because you know it, you've heard it. Uh, something you might not have known is that more than 75% of forensic laboratory work involves drugs, either because that's what the dead body has in it or because we have to check it just in case there were drugs involved. We know it's involved in numerous crimes, so we have to know about how drugs affected it and how it, the drugs would fit in. Or maybe it did fit in, maybe it didn't fit in. We should know about that. So a lot of forensic laboratory work involves drugs, um, because it's so popular and it, it's, it's so involved with crime. So, don't do drugs. You are preventing forensic scientists from doing the job of helping people uh, in other ways. So, um, you know, the, you know, at least in my opinion, one of the worst problems of drugs is that it, it gets people addicted and they can't stop doing it. Um, there, this is called a dependence. A physical, there, there's a difference between a physical dependence and a psychological dependence. Physical dependence is one where the body signals that it does not have the drug and it must have it. Sometimes a person takes drugs and it poisons the body in this way and it makes the body demand more drugs. Um, barbiturates uh, do this, though. That, that's what puts people to sleep. Uh, heroin that is uh, a narcotic. We'll uh, deal with that hopefully soon. Um, and the body actually needs it. It craves it. So to a certain extent, if a person says, I'm not taking this anymore, or the person finds himself in the middle of a desert and is unable to take it anymore, um, his body, he, he will get sick because, well, not necessarily, but um, because the body is going to demand it. The body is going to um, um, go through changes because he doesn't have it. So uh, there, in order to get the person off of this, sometimes, uh, so not always, but sometimes a part of the, the, the weaning a person off of this physical dependence is actually allowing them a little bit so the body doesn't, doesn't um, go crazy and it doesn't destroy itself because it does not have the drugs that it has a physical dependence with. Uh, some drugs... Uh, does not they don't, they don't produce this the body does not um, have a, does not demand uh, the drugs that it that it was that it had um, and, but we do have a, it, it does it does produce what they call psychological dependence people like the feeling and psychologically they feel they need it and they must get that feeling again um, this is psychological it's not physical because physically the body will not uh, shut down or do anything strange or or um, unhealthy when not having the drug but the psychology of the person demands it and makes the person take it more and more <clears throat> now it might not be physical but this cannot be underestimated cocaine marijuana use it is very unfortunately uh, popular and, and they develop addictions for these drugs even though they're not physical dependents they, are, they, they develop many many very serious dependences even though it's not a physical one uh, psychological dependence, by the way, is not uh, is not limited to drugs. You can be psychologically dependent on sugar packets, uh, tasting sugar. You can even develop a psychological dependence on on uh, exercise. Um, in fact, there is um, some idea that uh, fast food stores they they um, 
they develop their food so that a person can get a psychological dependent a psychological dependence on their food on their burgers or on their uh, uh, or on their their hot dogs uh, by the salt and the fat they put in there gives people a good feeling people can be addicted to that and the fast food companies they play on this addiction that people can have to uh, even food psychological addiction that is uh, a lot of the the drug problems uh, have so societal aspects uh, they know the society causes the problem uh, to be like uh, more manifest or more or um, or cause it to spread or causes it to be more accepted and therefore uh, having it'll it'll there'll be more of the problem um, questions that that can be asked you know, about the society the where the drugs are is does the society consider the drugs not to be too bad like uh, it's okay uh, to take drugs um, let's say it's it's uh, for whatever reason maybe it's um, it makes people think uh, makes people think they look good uh, when they take drugs so and so people think that oh taking drugs is not a big deal uh, it's not gonna hurt much if society believes that there will be more uh, drug problems there some cultures that uh, they actually create a stress like you know it can be argued um, again uh, we're not that's more the uh, anyway uh, it can be argued that uh, the inner city, the the poverty in the inner cities, uh, causes stresses in, in life that drive people to take drugs to avoid these stresses. Uh, it's not the right way to do it. You can solve stress problems. You can. There are. Um, I, I'm not aware. Incidentally, I'm not aware of any stress that uh, uh, caused by poverty that demands uh, a drug. But. Uh, but people would believe it. You know, they have uh, they're poor. Uh, they can't support their family. You know, uh, people are uh, demanding uh, that they pay loans that they don't have the money for, and they're very stressed. So instead of solving the problem or dealing with the stress, they remove the the brain that is stressing them by taking drugs. Uh, again, that's an oversimplification. But again, some cultures that have certain stresses might cause people to turn to drugs to avoid the problems okay and again the more you have that more drug problem you'll have uh, there are certain societies that actually promote the use of drugs and uh, for example this is what I've heard I have no idea if it's true anymore um, but let's say some uh, like Native Americans uh, in the like the northern areas like Alaska uh, northern uh, northern Canada uh, like, like, sort of like the Eskimos, but like in the real, really cold, cold places, where they had reindeer, and they part of their religion involved uh, a medicine man a, uh, or uh, a, a priest. I'm not exactly sure what the what the person was, but uh, what happened was um, reindeer. The reindeer, which were popular there, they uh, would eat all kinds of plants. Some of the plants were actually um, they actually had toxins or poisons that uh, were drugs that they affected the brain of uh, uh, of uh, whatever whoever would eat it of a, let's say a mammalian brain uh, the brain of a mammal now uh, the the reindeer um, could handle this uh, but uh, the body of the reindeer wanted to get rid of this stuff so it actually uh, removed it in the reindeer urine now the medicine man the priest would collect this urine from wherever the play thing urinated it and drink this urine because the urine had